Now, so far we assumed for uh, motion of a spring that the only forces affecting the motion were this uh, is spring force and this mass m that was attached to the spring. But uh, this is just too ideal a case in which say the spring is moving in a vacuum because generally uh, what will happen is this that the that the surrounding medium or some other arrangements will affect the motion so that its amplitude decreases and uh, generally that uh, force is called damping and it's proportional to a power of the velocity which is dx dt. Now in our case we will just assume that it's a constant multiple by a co positive constant c of the velocity no other power here. So for a positive constant c we are treating dx c times dx dt as our uh, damping force and uh, so in the presence of this damping force what happens is that our differential equation changes to so changes to this equation and where we have a negative sign here because uh, this damping will act in the opposite direction of the positive direction of x all right so and again we are just assuming that uh, the only other force other than the spring force and because of the motion of this mass the only other force present is the damping there is no other forcing factor here or no other forcing involved so let us consider this example in which we can see the effect of the damping that is introduced so here we have we are given the spring constant as two uh, pounds per foot okay and the mass that weighs four pounds is attached to the spring and the damping force actually here numerically equals the instantaneous velocity and these give us the initial conditions and we have to find the differential equation of the motion. So first let's determine the mass because uh, uh, the mass times in foot pound second system 32 feet per square second that equals 4 pounds all right so the mass is how much the mass is 4 over 32 that is 1 over 8 and we can write the unit unit is the slug here okay so this is the mass now if you recall that in the presence of damping our differential equation becomes uh, for the motion of this spring d2x over dt square sorry dt square equals k times uh, or rather negative k times x k is 2 so it'll be 2 times x and then minus the the damping and uh, what is the damping force the damping force is actually equal to the instantaneous velocity which is simply dx dt right and uh, our mass is how much let's just uh, write it down here mass is 1 over 8 right okay so what the equation becomes uh, then is that uh, this would be uh, okay let's just get rid of the fraction there maybe multiply by 8 to get this as uh, what 16 and this will be simply 8 okay so that gives us that uh, d2x dt square is going to be 8x uh, 8 times dx dt plus 16x and we shifted everything to the right side so that becomes 0 and here the auxiliary equation for our uh, differential equation or if we 
assume that e to the mt is a solution e to the mt i meant okay which means that uh, m plus 4 square is 0 and what is that going to give us that is going to give us that the we have repeated roots 4 here so xt is going to be c1 just a constant time e to the negative 4t then for the other linear linearly independent solution what we will do is we'll introduce a factor of t here so that is an equation of the motion now we can apply the initial condition uh, to determine the constant c1 and c2 so the value of the x when t is 0 is given to be how much one foot above the equilibrium position so that is negative one and uh, the I'm just going to write dx over dt as x prime so this is given to be how much negative eight feet per second right uh, no actually that is not right because it's the downwards velocity and downwards is positive here so it should be positive 8 okay so now let's apply x e, x at 0 equals negative 1 and see what that gives us so that gives us uh, this that is uh, x 0 equals and here this will become a 0 right and now this becomes 0 so that will take this part away and e to the 0 is a 1 so 1 times c1 is 1 so simply gives us what that c1 is negative 1 all right because x at 0 is negative 1 so what does this give this gives that we have x t equals simply a negative sign here now we will apply this initial condition x prime at 0 is 8 so when we differentiate okay so when we differentiate we will use the chain rule here so that will give us that uh, the derivative of e to the negative 4t is negative 4 times e to the negative 4t and those two negatives will turn into positive okay and then plus now here we will use uh, the product rule first so derivative of t is a 1 so let's write that down and then we will use the chain rule again so that will be c2 now we are differentiating the uh, this factor that will give us negative 4 times e to the negative uh, 4t okay so what we have is so this is x prime at t so when we let t be 0 what shall we get is that so here is 0 okay this is a 0 here 0 here and since this t is a 0 here that means that the this whole thing will become a 0 it disappears and x prime at 0 is 8 okay then 4 times e to the 0 is 4 and then c2 times e to the 0 is c2 so c2 becomes how much c2 becomes a 4 all right so c2 is a 4 and then the equation of the motion becomes these many feet at time t all right so here this is negative e to the 4t and this is a 4 all right so let's answer the subsequent questions now it's asking that at what time 
will the mass pass through the equilibrium position which means what at the equilibrium position xt will become how much that will become zero right so that happens at the moment when this whole thing is a zero and here actually right i mean it's it's an equation involving lots of you know involving transcendental functions but anyways fortunately what we find here is that e to the negative 4t will cancel the other e to the negative 4t on the other side so the equation comes down to how much simply this equals 1 which means uh, that it will pass through the equilibrium point or equilibrium position rather at 0.25 seconds okay now it says that uh, or it asks at at what time will it attain its extreme di displacement from the equilibrium position now notice when the extreme displacement occurs i mean at that instant the 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 spring would come that just at that moment to the rest and let me show that to you by sketching a graph of the uh, graph of the motion so here is a graph of x in terms of t and you can notice that at uh, 1 fourth second or 0.25 uh, is passing the equilibrium position and here uh, the the velocity is zero okay and this is the extreme position so what we will do is so remember this was our velocity vector with c2 equals 4 so I have a 4 here and with c2 as 4 this changes to negative 16 so our velocity is how much the velocity is these two add up to 8 okay and then this is going to be 0 at what instant so again you know we will cancel e to the negative 4t and what that will give us is that 8 minus so we are dividing the entire equation by e to the negative 4t and so these cancel 0 over e to the negative 4t is 0 and t becomes how much just one half of a second all right so this is the time when it will have the extreme position and then we have to find the position when it is at the extreme displacement position right so let's go ahead and bring our uh, our e equation for x here so this is our x our xt okay so we want to get the value of xt at t equals how much one half so let's write a one half here i could have written just two directly but let's not do that okay and this also becomes what one half right okay so what we get is we get negative e to the how much negative two then four times uh, one half is two and then we have e to the negative two again so that's about e to the negative two uh, feet all right feet and actually below the equilibrium position and of course in the graph since their x will be treated as uh, positive so here at point five we have one as we have e to the negative two which will be like point one three or point one four about okay so those many feet 
below the equilibrium position right so it's 0.14 approximately all right okay 